Today's video is all about leak specifications for the Canon EOS R1 electronic viewfinder. Now the EVF in this camera is supposed to have a higher resolution than the Canon EOS R5, higher than the R3. And the peak brightness on this EVF, well, are you ready for this? It's supposed to be around 4,000 nits. That's right, 4,000 nits. Now I've got other leak specifications, so stick around after this short break for all the details. But first, please do me a favor, follow me on Twitter, but most importantly, please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything and really does help this channel grow. And it also helps keep you up to date on the latest news and rumors, specifically in this case regarding the Canon EOS R1. The Canon EOS R1 must be around the corner because this is the third video with leaked information on that camera in as many as two months. And according to Canon rumors, the Canon EOS R1 is going to be ready in time for the Paris Olympics, which means that we could get an announcement as early as late January, and the camera most likely will start going on sale, start shipping around, well, let's say March or April. But today we've got leaked specifications on the EVF. The EVF on the R1 is going to be a little bit bigger than the EOS R3 and bigger than the EOS R5 at 0.7 inches. Now, when I first read this, I thought, that seems awfully low. Shouldn't it be north of three inches? And of course, old man was in, old man brain was interpreting that as, well, the LCD, but we're talking about the EVF. So 0.7 inches, to put that into perspective, the EOS R3 and the R5, 0.5 inches. And the resolution has also gotten a boost. The R5 and the R3 both have 5.76 million dots. The Canon EOS R1 with its new EVF has seven plus million dots. We don't know if it's gonna be 7.76 or 7.16 or 7.99 or even eight, but according to the leaked rumors from Canon rumors, and again, thanks Craig, we know it's gonna be north of seven megapixels. It's gonna have a variable refresh rate, and the actual refresh rate is gonna be somewhere between 600 and 240. That's a bit of a nice boost. Now the R5 and the R3, well, I know the R5 can go up to 120, but I don't believe the R3 can go up to 240. Let me know, correct me in the comment section down below. I believe the R3 does top out at 120, but regardless, the new EVF and the Canon EOS R1, 60 to 240 hertz. Pretty impressive. That is, it, it, it's, <laughs> I, I wanna know some of the video specifications and stills capabilities, but still it's nice to get something on the R1 on a relatively slow July week. No surprises that the EVF is gonna be blackout free, but the brightness, now I don't know if you can sustain this or if it's gonna be the peak brightness, but I'm gonna assume that it can go all the way up to and at least hold 4,000 nits for a certain period of time. 4,000 nits, that is very bright. That is very, very bright for something that you're gonna be holding up to your eyepiece or to your eye through the eyepiece. It's not like the LCD. The LCD, that's where I wanna see a lot of brightness. 4,000 nits, wow, that is pretty impressive. But what do you think about these leaked specifications for the Canon EOS R1 electronic viewfinder? We've got some interesting specifications. Higher resolution at seven plus million dots. We're gonna have a slightly larger EVF at 0.7 inches instead of 0.5 inches. And I really like that because when I look through the Canon EOS R5 to the EVF, no matter how I arrange that camera, I'm always losing out on either the left or the right side of it. I just can't seem to get the entire thing into view. So that's really good news to have a slightly larger EVF. And I hope that the EOS R5 also gets a slightly larger EVF. Yeah, this is pretty exciting. So we're getting a lot of leaked specifications on the Canon EOS R1, a camera that is going to be coming out after the Canon EOS R5 Mark II. But where are the leaked specifications for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II? Well, none to be seen. Um, as soon as we get them, as soon as I get them, I'm gonna let you know because I'm eager to get a second camera for my studio, for my business and I'm eagerly awaiting. I'm, I know there's some really great deals on the R5 right now, but I want the R5 Mark II. It's something I can talk about on this channel while I keep the regular R5 as Studio A camera. And of course, that firmware update for the Canon EOS R5, I haven't heard anything extra. I haven't heard anything new. I've been told that when it's ready, it will be released, but until then, um, nothing else. But as soon as I hear something, I'll let you know. And if you want to stay up to date on the latest camera news and rumors, specifically regarding the R5 firmware, the R5 Mark II specifications and images, or the Canon EOS R1, well then go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. And for all those minor news and rumors, well then go ahead and follow me on Twitter, this address here, 
For all those news stories that aren't quite big enough to have their own separate video, or for notifications of discounts, like today there's a whole bunch of deals on apparently getting ready for Pro Amazon Prime. We're seeing that Best Buy and a lot of camera retails, Adorama and B&H, are putting out a huge amount of sales. So I'm seeing sales on Sony today, $700 off the, the A3 with the 24-70 to F4. We're also seeing discounts off the A6600, the A6100, and of course we've got $500 off the Canon EOS R5 with a free battery grip for $33.99 at Adorama and B&H. $500 off the Panasonic S1H. And of course, $300 and $400 off respectively. And who knows, in a few years, you're not going to need an Amazon Prime membership to get really good deals on cameras, storage, and other useless stuff that they sell. Um, they have some good stuff, but they have, as, have some useless stuff. But also, if you do buy storage off Amazon, the very first thing I recommend you do is use H2 Test for Windows or F3 Write on the Mac and make sure that you can write to every block of that disk. You want to make sure that you're, you didn't pick up a fake um, storage card or a CF Express card, SSD, because the thing, what happens with Amazon is, even though you can say you're purchasing it from a recognized retailer or even Amazon themselves, when they get all these hard drives or they get all these CF Express cards or SSDs, they basically all come into one bin. So if you've got a, somebody who is, uh, let's say, not ethical and they're providing fake devices, they'll go into the same bin. And that's why you'll see some really great reviews for some products. And then you'll see, hey, it's fake. I got a fake one. Here's my evidence. So keep an eye out for that. And regardless of where you buy these things from, I highly recommend using H2 Test on Windows and F3 Write on the Mac. And it's going to write to every single block. It's going to show you the average write speed. And if you have any errors, that could be a sign that either the card is bad or you ended up with a fake one. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great week and we'll see you again soon.